this week on Ridiculously Bored. So if anybody wants to advance order next week's shirts, will be f you, David. And I guarantee you, I'll be spelling that right. It tastes like rotten cheese. That's f***ing nasty. What? Oh, yeah, please. Let's go. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Michael. And I am Michael Carter. And we are... Ridiculously Bored. Okay, Mr. Michael Carter, we are back. Episode number 17. How is it going? It's going very well. For the people who are watching on YouTube, maybe they're catching a little vibe from our new shirts that we got. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Philly. Printed. <laughs> All right. Can can we talk about these shirts before we do yes, anything else? You can else? go right into... Because <laughs> you know damn well what's going to happen. Yes. The... So... So I get a text last week and it <laughs> it has a picture of of the shirts that you ordered. Yes. And my first response was who the fuck is Filey? <laughs> if you'll notice <laughs> it says Philly, there's two L's. I don't know what you're talking there's about. There's not two L's, there's <laughs> only one L. This is why you don't get a GED. I don't know if I've ever written philly down so to yeah, me it's, when it's I, not I, something I that you would write down yeah well yeah. I, i'd like to blame it on the company is that possible can i say that i the had two l's that... and they just misprinted it <laughs> or even worse the fact that they looked at it and said does this idiot know that he's spelling philadelphia wrong <laughs> <laughs> they probably enjoyed it it's on their walls now stay in school children <laughs> so yeah so the 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 part that's the hardest part for it is one they weren't cheap right so that's one <laughs> And then two was the fact that as soon as I sent it to you, you're like, you don't feel it spelt wrong, right? <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is I wanted to get it for you as a surprise. Instead, it bit me in the ass. All right. So for, for those of you that, uh, that are listening and not watching, if you haven't figured it out already, we have Fuck You Philly t-shirts. Uh, unfortunately, Philly was, was spelled wrong. And uh, Michael had to put, by the way, yours... He put a line in between the L to make it look like two L's, which which was pretty genius, right? Except it looks kind of dumb. But Couldn't I get a color to match. That's part of the I problem. Got, I got the total, like, this looks like one of your kids did it. Yours looks all, like, straight and professional. <laughs> and you know what's sad about that? Yours is was the second one. Really? So the first one I kind of did freehand. And then the second one, I was like, you know what? Let me get a ruler. Let me. So when I use the ruler, <laughs> I use the ruler to line up and do a line. But when I did it, of course, with the fuck guy here, I wasn't centered. <laughs> so I drew the line at about 70%. And I'm like, oh, motherfucker. So your line, I had to keep making bigger and bigger. So now it, it finally covered the middle of it. Oh, yeah. It looks it looks pretty ghetto. But I, I'll, I'll give you credit for, for coming up with uh, drawing the line down the middle of the L because I, I wouldn't have thought of that. I would have just scrapped the whole thing and ordered new ones. I was and, close. And <laughs> i was so, close to that to so if honest. anyone's interested in fuck you philly t-shirts uh let us know we'll we'll start up a merch store and and then you can order it and uh the little uh you can pick one l or two that'll be our little uh <laughs> our little treat you fuck can pick you, which one. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right what uh what questions i know we released episode 16 uh oh, two three days ago um so there's enough time there was a lot of a lot of chatter. What uh, what questions did you get on, on your end? So one of the questions that came up was, why is it called beta testing? Like, I think we used it accurately, accurately, mm -hmm. but why is it called beta testing? Do you have any idea? I didn't look it I up. Do. Just... I do. Um, I've, you know, my career has been around what, uh, just development in general and programming. Um, anytime you release a digital product, whether it be a website or a piece of software, um, they go through various stages of testing and, uh, I don't know where it originated from. It'd probably be worth a, a decent Google to look up where the, the term terms originated from because there's alpha testing and then there's beta testing. Alpha is typically really early, like internal testing. Like if I have a team of developers, 
we'll have an alpha testing um, stage where we test the heck out of it and make sure that it works the way that it was supposed to before we release it. Beta testing um, is meant to be kind of like end user testing, but not like a final finished release product. So um, in the uh, in the video game world, you'll see a lot of software developers will offer an open, a public beta where they'll allow people from the outside to play their game before it's officially released and sold on the shelves in stores or online. So um, beta yeah. testing is typically that public testing in marketing it's typically used whenever you want to kind of get you want to test a sample of the market in last week's episode i think we used it in in regards to like testing soft drinks mm -hmm. so what you do is you pick a market that's representative of the country so if you're selling it in the united states you want a market that has a very diverse you know a group of people and then you would beta test your your soft drink or whatever it is you you are, are trying to test in that market and see how it sells and if it sells well in that market you know uh, uh you know statistically it should sell well in the country as long as you don't fucking forget to ask the wrong questions in your uh <laughs> in your uh initial uh uh you know panel interviews with uh, people yeah, or you don't pick like montana as a reputative representative <laughs> sample. sample sorry yeah. montana you uh -huh. know what i mean all right. All right. Technical so, corrections? Uh, no, no. One other thing. So Franco got his card. Oh, he did. And he said that he got the envelope and every, the whole family was around. Oh, so Jesus. he was like, no, no, he didn't, he didn't open it in front of him. But <laughs> he, he knew better. And he said he saw it said ridiculously bored on the back. So he opened a little bit of it with people around and saw what was the start of someone naked. <laughs> and he was like, nope, not going to do this here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so... He said he went in another room and opened in another room and the gift card, which has was covering, I don't even, I didn't see the unedited photo. Thankfully, I only saw the one you sent me, which was the gift card covering the man zone. The genitalia. So, yeah. I don't know if the guy's actually naked or not, um, but he's like, yeah, the card eventually, uh, he said he looked at it in a way where he, he didn't need to see everything that was there, but he thanked us for the card. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it for, for the listeners. So there's a there's a photo of a a very large man on a bed sitting down with a limb spread sized eagle. yeah spread eagle with a limb sized tripod for lack of a better term <laughs> his, his third leg and uh, it's actually a pretty popular one uh, I've seen it go through social media many many times that's because so, you keep googling it <laughs> uh, yeah right. <laughs> So I thought it'd be funny to take that picture and then slap the gift card on top of the the man parts so that when uh, our winners of our contest had to open it, they had to make a decision whether or not they wanted to remove the gift card and see what was underneath. <laughs> so I... It I, 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 I hemmed and hawed on this one back and forth for a while. I'm like, God, this is a lawsuit waiting to happen. So what I ended up doing was instead of having the full picture there, I ended up taking the clown emoji from like your iPhones, the clown emoji, and I put it on top of his man part. So even after you pulled the, uh, the Apple card away, you didn't, you weren't uh, <laughs> triggered or exposed to his, uh, his man parts, but I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, let me tell you, people definitely know you sent it because I would not have, <laughs> I would not have covered it. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, how many lawsuits is this going to cause if if it gets into the wrong hands? <laughs> so, moving moving on to technical corrections, you had told a story last week about some little old lady who gave you I did. a finger and cut you off, and you told me off air later that you forgot a I little forgot. piece of that story. What, yeah. what was the piece? Her, her license plate was um, Pennsylvania license plate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I bet you she's from Philly. Fuck you, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that is great. And like, I forgot to mention it when you were telling me, but yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so what is the Steph Curry? You have uh, that down. Uh, yes, I put it in our notes. So you know how you like to go back and, and fact check everything I say? Mm -hmm. And you even now have a little army of listeners that also do this. 
Star um, Wars has made it his mission yes. <laughs> to prove you wrong with anything the you mentioned. The best part about it is he's not even posting facts. Like <laughs> none of the stuff that he posted is verifiable. <laughs> I'm posting like, oh, ideas. that's where we are. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're in that America now. Facts don't matter. Um, so I took it upon myself to look back a few episodes and you made a comment that for some reason stood in my mind. And that was, we were talking about Tom Brady and how you, uh, you uh, as a better you had a better chance of of betting on him to be in the Super Bowl, which his mm-hmm. statistics are 50%, than Steph Curry making a three. And in that sentence, you said Steph Curry was the greatest three-point shooter of all time. Yeah, it's a yeah. word for word what you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just meant kind of like now. Like I didn't legitimately mean forever, but sure. So not only is Steph Curry not the best three-point shooter now, or of all time, he's Who's not even. Now? He's not even the best three-point shooter in his family. Well, no, no, that's just this year. His brother. No, 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 no. Oh, his father. No, his brother, Seth Curry. His, if you look at his, um, his and by the way, his brother has been in the NBA f- since 2013, I believe. So we're not talking like a couple of years. Mm-hmm. His his career three-point percentage is number two on the all-time list. Steph Curry's three-point percentage career-wise on the all-time list. Oh, by the way, only in the NBA for two or three additional years. So it's not like we're talking a decade of more, you know, chances to, to miss free throws. Um, he's number eight on the list. Number one on the list was um, Kerr, um, the coach of the uh, Golden State. Steve, Steve Kerr. Kerr. Yeah. Well, I wonder, well, one, you're a dick. Because you're the one who looked at them. <laughs> but two, I wonder what the volume is, right? Because that's the other thing. Like, I, even this, his brother has a better percentage this year, but I bet you the volume's not there. Like, that's the thing. So I think Steph Curry just the puts criteria it up so for the the statistics that I saw, I saw, you had to have a minimum of 250 attempts. So it's, I mean, but I mean, so you'd you'd immediately say, well, oh, that's nothing. Like. That's that happens in probably a single season, maybe two seasons with any player, right? But it's a career statistic, so it actually goes back to 2013. So mm-hmm. he's got thousands of attempts. So over the course of thousands and thousands of three point attempts, he's number two on the all time list. I never knew that. I didn't even know that Seth Curry was a player in <laughs> in the NBA. That's how much I like pay a attention. movie character, like his evil twin in a movie. <laughs> no, I'm, I was just curious. I'm like, let's look up the all time leaders in three point statistics, and I pulled it up, and I'm like. Hold on, they have the same last name. Yep, they're brothers. <laughs> so if anybody wants to advance order next week's shirts, will be fuck you, David. <laughs> I guarantee you, I'll be spelling that right. <laughs> so put a com- put a comment down if you want one of those shirts. We'll oh man! All right, <laughs> that's it for corrections. How was your week? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Good, good. So this week I did, and look, in the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of. Zoom calls, happy mm. hours, you know, people just trying to keep in touch. And then, unfortunately, with it becoming the norm, it moved to not as many of those anymore. And as you know, we even had like a weekly poker game for a while before people realized a way to figure out how to do other shit during during the pandemic. But this week, I actually was on a Zoom 50th call, which I thought was rather interesting. It was a bunch of uh, my cousins and, uh, you know, one so of my older like cousins. A fifth, like a 50th? birthday Birthday for one of your cousins one of them and it wasn't like a oh hey we're gonna do up the whole thing like it's a birthday it was just like hey it's gonna be my 50th birthday i want to get a bunch of people on the call so it it just it felt good to do something i know we weren't in person but what felt normal right yeah a big event somebody's birthday to be able to do those things so that was my big thing this week um and like i said you think it's a small thing but it does it it is nice Mm -hmm. how was your week um, my weekend was really good. My week was just more of the same, just work related stuff. But my weekend, the wife and I decided to get out of town and we went up to Sedona, Arizona, which is about two and a half hours north of Phoenix. No, not even eh, maybe two hours north of Phoenix. And uh, it's this beautiful, um, red rock country. There's lots of like, you know, it almost looks like the Grand Canyon, like a smaller version of it, except instead of being in a hole, the, the rocks are just mountains all over the place. And uh, it's a really cool town with lots of little, you know, kind of curio shops and stuff like that. So we went down there. Um, I took some cameras. We did some, got some drone footage, got some driving footage. I actually posted a video 
on my other channel if anyone's interested. The channel's called David Michael, uh, and it's just of the the actual trip itself. But um, yeah, pretty good. But one of the things that um, that happened in that, and I know I'm skipping around a little bit, but um, something I, I witnessed something that I said, oh, that would be a great segment for our faith in humanity sketch. And uh, so I got it. So I figured uh, while, while I'm bringing it up, I might as well talk about it. So I'm in a, uh, a Starbucks, uh, not in Sedona, on the way back from Sedona. And uh, Starbucks is, is known, you know, everyone's been to a Starbucks, I'm sure, but they're, they're known for having these little kind of like uh, chalkboards where they write like these little sayings like, you know, customer of the week or drink of the day or whatever like that. Well, this one had a quote on it and I saw it and I thought it was awesome. It said, I love you. You're probably thinking you don't even know me, but if people can hate for no reason, I can love. And I thought that was cool. And I said, you know what? Faith in humanity restored because I was not expecting that. And it was kind of nice to see that. And we do see a lot of hate and hatred and all sorts of bad things going on. So I thought that was a nice little counter to last week's fuck you flip bird from the old lady driving the car all over the place from Philadelphia. Fuck you, Philly. So just six bucks for a coffee got you a sweet message. That's, That's nice. right. <laughs> Only six dollars. <laughs> so we went to Sedona a few years ago, right? We did mm -hmm. that whole trip, and then we went to the Grand Canyon. Yep. And maybe if it had great in the term, like the Great Wall or the Great Barrier Reef, I would have liked it more. I, I don't know if you remember, but what I said about it as we were there for a few minutes, um, I'm like, it's it's a big hole. <laughs> the Grand Canyon. <laughs> what else to do yeah. about this? Yeah. Yeah. And then we went recently, a year and a half or so ago, with, you know, the kids, my kids and you and, and your wife went. And... It was such a different experience with the kids. Mm -hmm. The whole time, I, I didn't enjoy it because there's no fucking guardrails. <laughs> and so the whole time, I'm worried about, like, one of my kids is going to fall off this fucking into this big hole. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, and it's funny because when we went when we were younger, 15, 20 years ago, I, I don't think I paid any fucking attention to that. If you would have asked me yeah. to describe it, I wouldn't have been able to. But I wouldn't be like, oh, well, there was no guardrails, a lot of cliffs. Seemed a little crazy, but going with the kids, that's all I could think about was like, man, these kids, they don't pay attention to it as it is. One of them is just going to go off. <laughs> and then while we were there, we found an ice cream spot and everybody got happy. Yes. <laughs> Faith in, in humanity fact, restored. They, we got yeah, right. <laughs> in fact, I'm, I did a video of that trip. I'll have to post that video um, of that, that entire trip. Yeah. Uh, so since you're, since you're on Faith in Humanity, I'm going to give one as well. So last week was a negative one. This week was a positive one you gave. So we're back to zero. So I'll give you mine. So my cousin Yanni lives right around the corner from me. And there's a lot of things like I have to do on the other side of his house. He has to do on the other side of mine. So we constantly see each other on the road and we pass each other. So he has a blue minivan. So the other day I'm at a traffic light and I look across the light and he's at the light. And I'm like, oh, fucking awesome. I'm like, and he wasn't paying attention. I'm like, I get the, the green lights aren't um, synced because it's a big four way turn, but it's not a even four way. So they, they go one at a time. So I got the green light. I go through it. I pull up next to him, flip him the bird, smiling ear to ear. <laughs> I look at the guy. It's not my cousin. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so <laughs> the guy looks at me and he has like a, what the fuck did I do? Look. <laughs> and I, by that point, by the time I realized I was past him, so I don't know what that one becomes. I don't know if that's a, a push because he didn't give me the finger back. He just was more in shock or because I'm the fucking asshole if that's a <laughs> negative one. You know what? We talk all the time about how being around you is either going to get us into a fight or get <laughs> us a new best friend. <laughs> I think that's just what you're just so lucky. Because <laughs> I feel like if that would have happened in Arizona where everybody's open carry, <laughs> like you'd have bullet holes in the back of your car. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that's great. Oh, Jesus so Christ. what's the drink of the week? I saw it make an appearance. So the drink of the week, which I'm almost finished with, <laughs> I think I was a little early <laughs> starting this. Um, everyone knows I'm a big fan of Sailor Jerry Rum. So I went on their website and they have a bunch of recipes on it. So I picked one that looked really good. It's a, uh, I think it's called a Sailor Jerry Highball something. But it's uh, one and a half parts Sailor Jerry, half part of pineapple juice, and then you finish it with uh, ginger beer or ginger ale. It tastes almost like a Moscow Mule. So if you like Moscow Mules, which I'm a big fan of, um, those typically have vodka. This just happens to have my favorite rum in it, and it's awesome. 
So do you have those cups? What are they? Bronze cups? Tin cups? What are they? The I do. From I do have the Moscow Mule. They're they're um, I don't copper? know if they're actual. They're copper. Yeah, they're they're copper. But I mean, copper tastes like shit, and it actually makes the uh, the drink taste like shit. So most of them now they're like copper on the outside, and they're like silver on the inside. And what does that do for the drink? Does it keep it cold? There's, you know, well, I mean, metal metal's a good conductor of um of you know heat and cold. So yeah, it keeps it cold, pretty cold. Um, but I mean, I, I didn't feel like getting it, so I just have a glass with a big big so, ice cube. So stupid question then: Why don't they serve like a lot of drinks, like at bars and stuff, in metal? I guess chalices in this case. But why don't more drinks come like that? Why is that particular expensive. drink? Um, those those copper mugs are like ten to fifteen dollars each. If you and I were to buy them, I'm sure they get them for like five bucks a piece. But the highball glasses or the regular glasses that you would drink of probably cost ninety five cents a piece. So, and not only that, they're so nice. There was a bar that was right next door to a company that I worked at that we used to do happy hour with almost every day. It was ridiculous. Um, they had they were known for their Moscow mules, and we would always order them, and they would serve them in these copper mugs. And people stole them all the time. Like people would just walk out with the copper mugs. So you they have that ultimately stop doing restaurants. that. Yeah. 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 So I mean, that's how you go to a restaurant 12 times. You got to set a silverware in your house. That's especially you if it's do. real copper. I mean, I, most of them aren't. It's like bronze or something like that. But real copper is very expensive nowadays. It's a, it's a, it's a rare, um, rare metal. Well, the copper is the ones that always get stolen in houses. Like mm -hmm. when houses are like 80% done, but the walls are still open. Yeah, they'll rip all the wire out. They, they take all the, yeah, they take all the copper out of the house. Yeah. So copper is a good conductor of electricity. So therefore <clears throat> in, in high demand. Any current events this week? Um, yeah, there was one. We were talking about cancel culture the last couple of weeks. And uh, this happened a couple of days ago. Um, Pepe Le Pew. Do you remember Pepe Le Pew from the old Looney Tunes? The uh, the French skunk, the oh, mon chéri, yeah. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Rather aggressive kiss. French skunk. Yeah, he Which, would. To be honest, it's probably French people in general. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Fuck you, France. <laughs> <laughs> Those teachers will be coming next week. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I guess they determined that, that, uh, if you've ever watched the Pepe Le Pew Looney Tunes cartoons, the whole seg the whole cartoon, you know, all 50 of them or however many there were, um, was him basically trying to get with a cat that looked like a yep. skunk, like a black cat that looked like a skunk. And um, it essentially what came down to is modern day sexual assault. <laughs> like, so they they officially kind of came out and said, you know what, we're going to we're going to stop releasing these we're going to stop airing them we're you know we're gonna we're not going to create obviously create any new you know um content that includes pepe Le Pew. so uh so a cartoon character that was pretty integral to our childhood has been canceled wow you know it, but like you said we're in an environment right now where you can't win right oh so for sure disney has i think it's disney has released a bunch of the old movies and put warnings on them that mm -hmm. are like, yeah, there's some inappropriate content in these movies, yeah. you know, it was the time. And they're getting shit for doing that. So, like, yeah. you can't win. The, here's the thing. Like, growing up, I, I never thought of Pepe Le Pew as, you know, anything other than a funny dude that was just obnoxious and nobody liked him. Like, that's, as, as a kid, that's how I thought them. In fact, it wasn't really until this week where I was watching the news and they, they had, you know, they did this segment where they talked about how, you know, Pepe Le Pew is getting canceled. And in the back of my mind, I went, you know what? <laughs> it's, it's pretty much modern day sexual assault. <laughs> if you think about it, it's all the things that we're telling, you know, we're saying is not okay about the work environment, right? You can't kind of cozy up to your female coworker and you can't pressure her into it. It's all of those things. But I never looked at it that way as a child yeah, and even and as an adult. Did I. Yeah. Did so, I, but unfortunately he got hashtag me pew. So yeah, so stuff, there you but... have it. Pepe Le Pew canceled yet another celebrity gone. Yeah. That's, uh, you can't fucking win. So you know what's next? You know what I want them to do next? Those Italian mobsters in the old Bug Bunny cartoons where he's like, he's, throws them in a oven at one point like why are those still allowed those were stereotypes of italians like why is that allowed 
Well, I mean, speaking of Italians, now that brings up the old uh, Sopranos episode where um, they changed Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And all the Italians were losing their mind because it was Christopher Columbus, you know, the uh, the the poster child of of Italian success, you know, found the the new land, and uh, you know now it's Indigenous Peoples Day in, or in most uh, in most vicinities. So uh, it is what it is. It's uh, times are a changing. Got to go along yeah. with it. See you later, Pepe. Yeah, bye, Pepe. Rest in peace, Santa Maria. <laughs> uh, so you know there uh, on occasion over the last few weeks there's been a theme of you being the dick in certain stories and and fairly and accurately so but oh whatever i thought i would tell a story where i, I couldn't figure a way out of it without just being a dick <laughs> so <laughs> i'll tell the story this is a long long time ago before 9 11 that's the only time i can place it and um i was going to see my cousin canuck in canada and it was right at the time, and, and it's funny because they're still doing it now, it was at a time where they were like, oh, we're going to go to you. Maybe you don't have a driver's license anymore. Maybe you need a passport, but you at least need a driver's license and we'll still let you in the country. Because for the longest time, like you could just drive into Canada and they wouldn't ask you for any ID and you could just drive in, go, and then mm -hmm. leave. So I go to the airport. I'm in line. And I realize while I'm in line, holy shit, I don't have any ID on me. I don't have my license, I don't have my passport, nothing. Um, and so, I, and I, I do want to have, I do have to say, because people think like, oh, well, if the lady's hot, you'll do or talk or whatever. No, that's not the case with me. As I've said before, if, some, if somebody touches me who I don't know, I don't like it. I don't care if she's a model or he or her are models or they're the ugliest person I've ever met. I don't like it when somebody I don't know touches me. So I'm in line. I am single. I don't know if that matters, but I will say that because people are like, oh, you, you were scared your girlfriend was going to find. No, I'm in line. Lady in front of me. They're like, it's taking forever. She turns around and starts chatting. Oh, how's it going? Where are you going? I, you know, this is the line to Canada. Where are you going in Canada? I could not at that moment think of any answer that would not make it a conversation. So I just turned around. <laughs> i didn't say anything to her i didn't answer her question i just turned around so yeah and people are like oh if she was hot you wouldn't have done that i'm like look she was a good looking lady i'm like that had nothing to do with it I, I didn't want to talk to anybody at that moment yeah i've been on planes you know it's the worst thing when you're doing like a five or a six hour flight and in your mind you're like all right i'm gonna sleep you know it's a late flight i'm gonna sleep as soon as i get on that plane and you know it'll make the ride shorter i'll wake up we're there it's gonna be awesome right and then you get on the plane, and the only person sitting next to you wants to talk. Chatty and, Kathy. <laughs> and, and they will not shut up um, to the point where this one time it happened where I was sitting next to the lady. It was in, in the old, the larger airplanes where there was two and then three in the middle and then two on the end. And it was just me and her on the end. And um, she she starts chatting, and I, I'm kind of like, ugh, like, I'm exhausted. So I, I kind of like just I don't respond you know, I'm just kind of like nodding and smiling. And then she looks at me and she's like, look, she's like, I'm deathly afraid of flying. And if I don't talk to you, I'm going to freak the fuck out. And I'm like, all right. So I, literally for five hours, I talked to this lady just to keep her from freaking out on the plane, did not get my sleep. And I think whenever I was arriving at where I was going, I don't remember where it was, there were plans to like go out afterwards. So I was like, counting on the sleep to be able to rally and go out afterwards and i didn't get it <laughs> that's when you do a simple bing uh, excuse me i need to move from this lady <laughs> she won't stop talking to me <laughs> yeah for sure all right so we teased uh last episode that we would uh we would do some bean boozle did you did you mm -hmm. get the goods i did i got this one i i got a little container well. yeah, yeah. yeah all right so here, here, as we open these, here's the question I have for you, because I had a plan in mind. Oh, you do. I'll you talk have a through plan. it as we did. I had a plan. So my plan you was swap them all out with good tasting flavors, weren't you? Doesn't seem to be that hard of a plan to get prepped. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a bag of 500 <laughs> jelly beans. So the idea was I was going to switch them out, and then I would tell you at the end, though, I would be like. Oh, hey, by the way, I switched all the flavors out so everyone 
but I thought <laughs> that might actually make you mad at me, so I decided not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, this is right. going to be disgusting. I know it. I've done this game before, and I know you have as well. So yeah. uh, I've actually, I look usually look forward to uh, when we record these things. I've not been looking forward to this at all because I hate this fucking game. Well, right now, I, I hate just this package. My wife was it. so excited about it. She wanted to actually, like, watch us do it live because she knows it's going to be hysterical. She's I do not it. think it's going to be hysterical. How the fuck does this so thing you, work? You got to pull the little lid off. I did. You got to open the flap like you would a soda, and then there's another thing under it you got to lift. I got to lift it or push it? You lift it. And then you lift the whole thing. So there's a piece here that you got to pull out as well. Yeah, I did that. That's first. That's second. Now when you lift the whole thing, one will come up. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. You lift the whole thing up and then you push it down. Yeah. So let's gotcha. go over some of the flavors. All right. The the good flavor is toasted marshmallow. The bad flavor is stink bug. Oh my god, serious. Oh, that's the white um, with brown, yeah. Yep. White with brown. Like uh then there's buttered popcorn and rotten egg, Ugh. yellow. Peach and barf, which is uh pe peachish i guess <laughs> um juicy pear and booger Oof, those are greenish uh -huh. tutti fruity and stinky socks is rainbow color um birthday cake so and dirty flavors. dishwasher is white with speckles Be berry blue and toothpaste i'll take that all day based yeah, on these i was flavors. gonna say that's the best combination right because toothpaste yeah. at least it's minty and not like barf yeah and then the brown one is chocolate pudding and canned dog food. Uh -huh. Have you ever tried dog food? Uh, you know what? I've tried dog biscuits. I've never tried dog food. Like the I, the kinds that come in a can, like Alpo. Yeah. That shit looks nasty. That's like refried beans. My daughter almost tried dog biscuits once when we were in uh, the store out here, Stu Leonard's, which has, before the pandemic, has a shitload of samples as you're walking through it. Uh-huh. And so it's like, Daddy, can I have this? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Can I? She has no allergies, so I don't have to worry about what it is. Right. She's like, can I try this? I'm like, yeah. So she's like, oh, can I try this? And I'm like, sure, go ahead. She takes one. And then I look at it, and I like now I realize where we are. I'm like, wait, hold on. What is that? <laughs> she's like, I got it from there. It was a fucking dog biscuit. <laughs> she almost ate a dog biscuit. You should have let her. They're yeah, totally her safe. Uh, the white one is coconut and spoiled milk. Oh. Uh, and then the orange with... Speckles or peach with speckles yeah. is strawberry banana smoothie or dead fish. God, I'm my my stomach is like not doing so good right now just because just like reading those names off. I, I want right. the fucking water to wash this down with. That's not strong enough. Ugh. All right, so here's the rule: you have to swallow it, you cannot spit it out. All right, is that what you tell your you, wife? you can you can chase it with with water, but you have to you have to swallow. <laughs> It just it just hit you what I said. Yes. Well, I, I didn't hear what you said, but I know uh, I'll, I'll see it in the edit. But I know exactly where you were going. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's pick a flavor, and then oh, announce what. You don't pick a flavor. Two... You just pick whatever comes up. No, no. P pick a pick a jelly bean, right? And then announce what two flavors it could be. Okay. All right. Oh, geez, you I go got first. three of them. I did too. I I'm just putting them aside if I get too All many. Right. So just pick one of that lot. Got it. Oh, that's the good one. Save that. I think it is. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that looks so like berry blue, and toothpaste. So it's either going to be berry blue or toothpaste. All right. No, we're doing this at the same time, motherfucker. So you uh -huh. get yours. And if I see you reach for that 50-pound no, bag. No, the bag gonna... is closed. Hey, I have the possible tutti fruity one, and I also have a berry blue here. So I'm right, also going to take the do berry the blue. blue. Yeah, yeah, do the berry blue. Berry blue color, or toothpaste. All right, ready? ready? Go. One, two, three, go. Oh, I got toothpaste. I got toothpaste, too. This is not bad, though. No, if that's this all is, I get, this is I'm like fucking the best fine. of the bad flavors. All right. It really does taste like fucking toothpaste, though. It, um, you know what? It tastes like mint gum. It's just like spearmint gum or something like that. I could do that all day long. I want to fucking save one of those for later. And I do want to point out again, this bag is sealed. I did not open it. <laughs> How do we know we don't you don't have another bag down there somewhere? All right. So now the next flavor I have All in right. front of Cleanse me. Cleanse the is... palate. I have the white one. All right. Let's... All right. Um, and I already feel like this is gonna be spoiled milk. Spoiled milk or coconut? 
So here's the thing, though. I have two of the same thing. I have two Tutti Frutti or Stinky Socks. Two so statistically, I think I have both here <laughs> in uh, my you know, mind. You know damn well there's not a 50-50 split. They put 90% bad flavors and like 10% good flavors in this whole jar. So, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the right one and then immediately switch to the left one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Psych out. it out. There you go. Ready? So, yeah, go. One, two, three, go. Oh, fuck. Coconut. Oh, yeah, baby. I got stinky socks. <laughs> that actually tastes more, tastes more like rotten cheese. Describe it. Describe it for our listeners. It tastes like rotten cheese. That's fucking nasty. <laughs> Hold on, I haven't been able to swallow yet. I'm still trying. <laughs> coconut's that's pretty good. What you got? Yeah, coconut. That's great. <laughs> oh my god, it, that one's not stinky socks though, man. It, it's it's more like uh, rotten cheese. Oh, all right. So far, uh, we're not doing too bad here. Oh, I got, I got. It's a white one with the blue dots. So this is either birthday cake or dirty dishwater. <laughs> Can't get it up. Pun intended. There we go. All right. You got what? Either it's either birthday cake or dirty dishwater. That's not a bad choice. I got rotten egg or buttered popcorn. Uh, this dude, there's could be no, a vomit. Situation. There's no winner in that one. Even the butter popcorn is nasty. Oh no, I love butter popcorn. <laughs> you, jelly belly buttered popcorn? I don't know. That no. I don't know. <laughs> not the same. All, All right. right, ready? One, two, three. Three, go. two, one, go. Oh, fuck. Rotten egg. Dirty oh dishwater. Oh, oh. oh, it keeps giving. Oh. You're a fucking moron for picking this game. <laughs> oh. Oh. We did this once with a oh. couple families together. That was fucking disgusting. We did this once with a couple families together, and one of the kids... Got to a point where it was like, I'll take them. I think he just wanted jelly beans as well. So each time he was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And he got on a streak of like eight or nine in a row that were good flavors. Fucking little bastard. All right. I so I just got two flavors that I've already gotten. So I'm going to put those aside. Hmm. Unless you want me to have them. It's berry blue or the... Uh... Well, aren't you eliminating then the potential because i there can't be even if there's three of each right if you've already had a good one no you had the toothpaste ah, pass on that one yeah <laughs> yeah i got the same thing i got a blue one as well so i'm gonna put i it got inside. so the two that i have in front of me are both i've had the the worst flavors of both of them so i'll, I'll even if they're the best Ooh, flavors i'm gonna pass we'll get another one what is it? all right here we go juicy pear oh fuck i, I still smell the egg yeah, it's nasty. It did like it. Just, I don't know. I want to know who is the who's the brilliant scientist that came up with these flavors and was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna package that and sell it." All of a sudden, I'm worried if I shower today. It's like, it's, <laughs> is it me? <laughs> All, All right, right I got, got the oh fuck. I got the stink bug or toasted marshmallow. All right, I have juicy pear or booger. Oh, please be booger. Ready? <laughs> One, go. two, three, go. Oh. oh. Toasted marshmallow. No. Yes, There's no bitch, fucking way yes. boogers taste like this. Ooh, no way. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this one for a little. I'm going to pass oh around goodness. my mouth. Oh. Oh, man. This is good stuff. <coughs> <laughs> Please bomb it. Oh. Motherfucker. Oh. That's good. God damn it. So of the three flavors I've had, four flavors, I, I don't even remember. Most of them were bad. Fantastic. Good. All right, All right. let's do one or two more. Ugh. Oh, fuck that. I got a drink, man. That was disgusting. <laughs> I do want you to end on that note. <laughs> oh. All right. Next one is uh, I got the buttered popcorn slash rotten egg one. All right. I may uh, be answering that question if I ever tried dog food before. Because this is dog food or chocolate pudding. Ready? One, two, three, go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, motherfucker. Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. What? Oh, yeah, please. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you got the rotten egg, right? That shit stays with you. I'm telling you. Oh. 
Holy fuck, that was just intense. All right, here's the part that scares oh. me. Dog food one wasn't that bad. <laughs> 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 that bad. <laughs> oh god damn it that was disgusting all right last one all right <laughs> all right i got the white one again please 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 please, please, right. please. dirty dish what no no this is spoiled milk or coconut uh dude i think spoiled milk could make you fucking vomit if it's spoiled milk oh. i got the uh the dead fish or strawberry banana oh i hope it's smoothie. dead fish God, I don't ask for many things, <laughs> partly because I don't believe in you. <laughs> Actually, sorry, I believe in you. I just, for I don't think you're, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're very uh, nice and watching everything. I, please, please let me end on a good note. All right, ready? All right. One, two, three, Oh, go. hold on. God, please let him have a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> you. Everyone has been bad except for one so far. All right, three, one, two, three, two go. one, go. Ah, coconut. Oh, yeah, dead fish. <laughs> it's coming in. It's coming in. Oh, fuck you, Bing Goozle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh. Uh. oh, my God. I'm going to go lick Pepper Le asshole now to get that out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, mon <laughs> chéri. <laughs> He's up for it. I've seen the commercial. <laughs> I've seen the episodes. Oh, my oh God. that was so wretched. Oh, that was so wretched. It's sitting. It's sitting. That's fucking ridiculously bad advice. Try being boozled. <laughs> ridiculously bad advice by David Michael. Mm. Oh, it's great when you end on a good one. Now I've got coconut yeah. in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't say the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you and I were to create our own version of being boozled, what flavors would we include? We did not plan this. I just thought of this. Oh, man, that's a good question. <laughs> Try to give three flavors. Sweaty balls would be one of mine. Hmm. That'd be... Yeah, but you're the taste tester, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Like, you got people tasting these things. So oh, yeah. you're going to be like, hey, guys, listen, listen, listen. listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Hold on. Listen. This pink one here is is champagne flavored. Right? Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> We've made another pink one here that's... Sweaty balls. <laughs> <laughs> you think you get a lot of people to try those? Oh, man. Sweaty balls would be a good one. I think another one would be dirty taint. Oof. <laughs> oh. Where, where, and I'm the bad one. What happened? Um, I don't know. Probably trombone. like toe cheese, right? They can do that, right? You know, where people have like athlete's foot and sweaty feet and all shit like that. Oh. That would be good. Um... You think you can do a hair flavored one? Used tampon. Cool. Oh. Make That's it taste like pennies. Very popular with the Dracula <laughs> crowd, though. Very popular. With the vampire they they crowd. consider the normal one the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's like cherry or used tampon, they're like fucking cherry again. It's over great with the Cullen family <laughs> from Twilight. Um, I don't know. Um, mold. Right? And you can have a mold flavor without being like dangerous. Well, fucking penicillin's mold. It's the greatest thing in the world. That would be good. Put the penicillin and the sweaty balls together. You got a you got a jock itch cure. <laughs> oh Jesus. All right, moving on. We did have uh we did have uh, that wasn't ridiculously bad advice, although it probably should be. Um we did have a ridiculously bad advice column for this episode. Do you want to read it? Sure. If you're worried about getting picked on at school, walk into the cafeteria and find the biggest kid in the room. Punch him square in the face. Nobody will mess with you after that. Ridiculously bad advice by David and Michael. <laughs> I actually don't think this is all that bad advice. It's prison rules. You're, you're giving pe people prison rules. But here's the deal. So when I was growing up in grade school, I got bullied a lot. And it wasn't until I figured out that the minute that they knew you were willing to fight back, 
was the end of the picking mm -hmm. on and the bullet. You didn't even need to win if you got in the fight. You just needed to show that you were willing to fight. You were to willing fight. to fight, yeah. And it took me the better part of like five or six years. I mean, it wasn't until high school when I actually figured that out. And I literally remember the day. And it wasn't me going, hey, I'm going to try something different. I literally lost my shit. I, we were in a bus. I think it was either a freshman or a sophomore. We were in a bus on the way to school. And it was raining outside. And the bus had a leak. So there was puddles in the bus. Or no, somebody left the window open before we got in. And the bus had like, you know, like the water on the seats. Somebody took a, uh, a piece of like loose leaf and like crumpled it up dipped it in the water and I was sitting in the front of the bus and they threw it at me and it hit me in the back of the head. First time it did it, I just kind of, I looked back and I kind of smiled and then I just kind of looked forward and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to mind my own business. About a minute later, bam, I get hit in the head again with this wet, you know, thing of soppy paper. So, and I just said, fuck, I stood up and turned around and started walking to the back of the bus and like five people pointed fingers at the dude that <laughs> threw it. Right. And I walked up to him and I got in his face and I took his face and I shoved it against the glass uh, window. And I just went, you throw that one more time, motherfucker. I'm going to beat those shit out of you. And then from that point on, I did. I mean, that was like literally the end. Like after, from that day forward, nobody fucked with me. From that day forward, you became the bully. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, let me show you how it's done. Yeah. No, like I've, I've gotten in, uh, believe it or not, like I know my mouth gets me in a lot of trouble and things have escalated and I've, but I've actually only been in a few, very few fights in my life. Your mouth also gets you out of trouble because people think you're fucking crazy and they're yeah. like, all right, I'm not going to prison over this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that, that there's been cases of things like that, right? Where you you finally have just had enough and you kind of exploded somebody, mm -hmm. right? That that one's a little different. I think that's more um, it's just the straw that broke the camel's back, bad day, all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, there's been other times where just a random fight in school has happened and you get in a fight. Mm -hmm. Or it was the old, I'll see you, you know, three o'clock on the playground on the way home type right. stuff. So, I mean, there was one time, though, I remember one guy who would have fucking killed me. I know he would have killed me. He would beat the shit out of me. He's like, we're going to meet at 3 o'clock on the playground. He's like, all right, I know where you live. I know how you walk home. Fuck him. I walked the other way that day. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking walk into an ass whooping. Like, if I have a shot, maybe. And then, like, typical kids, the next day it was like, hey, you don't want to fight? And I'm like, nah. And he's like, all right. Like, and it was over. Like, it was nothing ever from it again. Yeah. But I remember a – so you talk about, like, being pushed. And – you know, when I was in school with Hot Chocolate, him and I had a few classes together. And mine and his friendship is different than some other just normal white guy, right? Like mm -hmm. him and I have known each other forever. We grew up together. Now, at this point, even in high school, at that point, we'd already known each other 10, 12 years type thing. So it's different. And I remember in class once, and he was a relatively quiet kid in class, believe it or not. And it, we were in class and he was sitting at his desk and I said something to him. I don't remember what it was, but I said something to him and it was like, ha 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 ha. Somebody else said basically the exact same thing. <laughs> he got up, basically threw his desk across the room and was like, <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill you. And he started going over to the guy and we're like, what? Ah! So we had to like stop it. So that's somebody who like, he was a pretty quiet kid when it comes to things like that. And even that it's just, the guy rubbed him the wrong way and he was going to fucking kill him. Yeah. So it happens, it happens to the best yep. of us. Yes. All right. But no, don't, uh, don't take our advice and don't punch anybody square in the face unless you want to, but don't do it because we told you to, because uh, we don't want to get canceled like poor Mr. Peppy Le Pew yeah. <laughs> or sued. Yeah, um, unless they're sitting where you want to sit. If that's the case, go punch them. <laughs> right? like, how else are you going to get that seat if you don't punch him in the face? <laughs> All right. What's this week's one crazy question? Oh, I came up with it. I'll answer it. Yes. Right. <laughs> so you... the one crazy question for this week is Girl. if you could spend 24 hours in Las Vegas with a celebrity, who would it be? And I fucking love this question. Right. Is this the question that somehow got deleted last week or did you no, just never no, remember this what one, that question was? I, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to pick one from our list. I'm going to go and, and just come up with a new one. And um, I, this was, I saw a very similar question online and I'm like, no, but what if we did this? And, and this is, this is the result of that. 
All right. So I'll let you go first because you. Can't, it seems like you're you're beaming to get your answer out. Oh no, I'm just saying. Like, if you could pick someone you know is just at least known for being an absolute reckless person in their regular life and spend 24 hours with them unhinged in Vegas. Uh, I'm thinking Robert Downey Jr. I'm thinking old Robert Downey Jr. Not Iron Man. Downey yeah, Downey Jr. I, I'm thinking um, Leonardo DiCaprio, like Wolf of Wall Street, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, who else? Uh, Johnny Depp. Like any one of those three guys would be an absolute blast to hang out in Vegas with for 24 hours and just go nuts. See, I, I'm more, I think some of those guys are too big. And I don't mean like, oh, I can't hang out with him because he's a mega celebrity, but like somebody like Brad Pitt, right? That was the first name that came to mind because he's handsome, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but the tell reason them, why Michael, he came to mind. Tell them, is he cute? Is he cute? <laughs> he is. He is. He's dreamy. Um, the, actually, uh, Oliver Wilson, Oliver, Oliver Hudson, who is uh, Kate Hudson's brother, Okay. That guy's a dreamy dude. He does not get enough credit. Well, I mean, He's a good looking yeah, dude. That family is really attractive. Yeah. Um, so the thing with Brad Pitt though, is I, I don't think I would enjoy it. I think it would be a constant with him. Can I take a photo with you? Can we do this? You can't go anywhere. Like I, I just I, like, look, you could live the high life, but you can live the high life with uh, a billionaire who owns a hedge fund. If you want to live that kind of life. So I thought about this. So, I don't think it would be one of those massive, massive celebrities. Don't you and think, though, would... that that would be part of the fun? Is you? I mean, think about it. Let's just take Leonardo DiCaprio, right? You walk into a casino with him or a nightclub with him. Immediately, the room stops. All attention is on you. And the manager runs up and says, hold on, we'll get you a private room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's your bottle service. Here's all the dancers that you want. Like... Can you imagine what, I mean, that's part of the allure is just going nuts and just being the center of attention for one day. But you wouldn't be the center of attention. You'd be the guy to the right of the center of attention. Sometimes that's the best place to be, man. Sloppy seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so like, um, and I don't know if I have this quote right, so don't fucking Google police me, oh, people you're, who you're are listening, dead. and you now. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have even said that. <laughs> So Michael Jordan has, has been quoted as saying, you'd want to be me for an hour, you'd want to be me for a day, you'd maybe want to be me for a week, but you would not, my, you would not want my life. Mm -hmm. And that's because you can't do anything, right? Yeah. No, I agree with so that. So that's how I would feel if I was with Brad Pitt. So now, if, if I step aside from that for a second, then it becomes a, a case of like, again, I said last week or two weeks ago, I've never been high in my life. Like, if, why don't I do something like that with, like, fucking Seth Rogen and really shoot the moon, right? <laughs> like, the whole yeah. shrooms, everything. Like, that would be, also, like, a crazy thing to do. Also, another great person to go to Vegas with. <laughs> yeah. Go anywhere with. I'd go to fucking church with him, and I know he's Jewish. <laughs> um, or, like, somebody like you said, Robert Downey Jr., but I would actually go a step lower, like maybe David Arquette. So mm. you got that fucking party animal who's known but not as well-known, and that might give you a little bit of things, but... Look, if any of them ask me to hang out with them, I'm fucking hanging out with them. Let's be clear. <laughs> like, but I don't, I don't, I don't actually think I would enjoy it. And I also wonder. I is, think you're like, overthinking this, man. You what? I think you're overthinking this. Well, it's one crazy question. You give it the respect it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> Eat another dead fish flavor. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I can still taste that shit. Yeah. Well, the no, like milk. the way I look at it as, I, look, I think it would be fun, and I think I would have fun. But I think I could have that same amount of fun with some hedge fund dude that nobody's ever heard of who's worth a couple billion dollars. Sure. I disagree. So. They say money can't buy you happiness. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> know what it can buy you? Literally everything else. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of a line I had once heard. <laughs> I'm not going to say that line. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, so that's what you'd want to do. Like, there's nobody else. Like, no, I just, you know, I mean, you just think of the scenes from like, again, we're talking 24 hours. We're not talking like a lifestyle, right? Think of the scenes mm -hmm. from like Wolf of Wall Street where, you know, Leon, Leonardo DiCaprio's, I, again, I don't know him. I just know what I've read about him, but 
he's he's led a very similar lifestyle, which was why he was perfect for that role. Mm-hmm. Is he's just known as an absolute party animal, and um, just likes to have a good time. So I just you think of somebody like that who's known for just going on an all day bender. Um, I got to imagine that would be pretty freaking fun just to get one day a glimpse of what that's like with uh, with someone who's who's basically Hollywood royalty. So what about if you get like say George Clooney, but you don't get the George Clooney of 20 years ago, the Ocean's 11 where he was partying and everything, but instead you get the George Clooney now of like I just stay at home with my wife and my kids. <laughs> what happens if you get that George Clooney? I wouldn't pick that George Clooney. This is I get to pick. I don't get stuck with anybody. <laughs> George, George, my 24 hours is not, dude, I'm going to bed. It's 930. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think Brad Pitt's much of a party animal anymore. I don't know. How can you with 12 kids or whatever he has? Yeah. <laughs> and I, four ex-wives. How many? I don't know. I'm sure Richie right. will, will look that up for us. Yes. <laughs> hey, Richie, look that um, up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Richie is the one who's blowing David up on uh, YouTube. Yeah. And, and please, we mentioned his name get because your facts you can you fucking idiot. At least get it right. God damn it. Hey, Google that. Google, Google, is Richie a fucking idiot? Let me know what the answer is on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. All right. So I went to, I went to dinner with Star Wars this week. He reminded me with um, talking about Richie and Googling you. I went to dinner with Star Wars this week um, and GQ, right? So some of the guys I've talked mm. about recently. And one of the things the guy, so Star Wars, you know, you've hung out with him. He's mm-hmm. been to Vegas a couple of times, yep. but he's a friend through a friend. He's GQ's friend. Right. Um, and, you know, GQ became friends with him well after you already moved out West. So you don't know him as well as the rest of us. So he was joking around and he was like, I dare you to talk about this. He was joking around that. He's like, why would David get remarried? <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like that's like the prisoner who commits a crime to go back to jail <laughs> he goes because he liked the food while he was there you don't have to answer i know your wife listens to this <laughs> but i just i just wanted to bring that up because he was like i don't think you'd ask him this i'm uh, not him. not falling for the bait nice try though um all right so i got the joke vault lined up so i got to give a little background and I'm actually sitting in my pajamas, so I'm not actually going to do the image, but I'll explain to you. The you know, Do you know what a dick thrust is? <laughs> I do not, but I can probably guess. All right. So it's exactly what you think. It's like uh, almost like one of those dance moves where your hands are on your hip and you just thrust your dick forward, right? Like, Why is it not a hip thrust? Well, because I got a dick. <laughs> Maybe for you, it's a hip <laughs> I, I don't thrust. Think that's a, I don't think that's a, that's a name. I don't think that's the real name for it. I think you just made that shit up. So you're already shooting down my joke without even hearing it. <laughs> okay. Oh, and Go actually, ahead. I call it a high dick in this joke. Okay. All right. Uh, um, but I do five. say thrusting. Hey, I'll give it to you. I do say thrusting hips. All right. All right. So anytime that you would um, do the high dick, the hip thrust, the dick thrust, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to mention it. I'm not actually going to do it. All right. So if I ever had to have a nervous tick, I would want one that would not be a wimpy tick, but something like a full-fledged high dick tick. Thrusting <laughs> hips. This is what I would be doing if I was on stage. I left myself a little like uh, directorial notes, thrust hips. <laughs> 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 then I could imagine having a job where it would be totally inappropriate, like say a college professor. He has to say, <laughs> he has to say to a student, excuse me, high dick, the report you gave me needs some work, high dick. Can you please see me after class, high dick? So we can high dick discuss it, high dick. Or if you you were at a bar, if you if you said to a lady, I'd like to buy you a drink and give her a high dick, if she says yes, that might be a good night. <laughs> oh yes. All right, that was pretty good. That was pretty That's good. Definitely one fault. of the most the more entertaining joke fault I, I jokes like, that we've had. I do in a like while. the directions I've given to myself in the joke. <laughs> Thrusting hips, it says in brackets. <laughs> All right. So I have a question for you. Yes. Um, the joke vault is not indefinite. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I mean, how many, how many more jokes are we talking about here? It depends on how loosely you call them jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so there is probably 30 pages of stuff left, but when I've looked through pages? them, Jesus it, Christ, but it's like, uh, so you really like thought Kevin this Spacey. was going to be a thing. 
It's like Kevin Spacey in uh, Seven, though, like his books in, in the background. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So it's so, all like little. Yeah. So it's all like random pieces of paper, shit written on them. Right. And so here's the thing, though. There's definitely some repeating themes. And, and anybody listening to this, I actually just showed the random package of papers that I have left. So it's it's random themes or continuous themes. Like I've noticed, and it's funny that I was writing this when I was younger. There's a couple comments on wives, right? Which I wasn't married. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they were like easy wins. So they, those were there. A lot of, a lot of shots at cops because to be fair, they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's, and then there's some that are, they're Pepe Le Pew 20 years ago. Like they were fine <laughs> in the eighties and nineties. I can't fucking say them now. So I haven't thrown them out yet, but there's some in there that I read and I'm like, Oh no, I'm not saying that. Like there's, oh, shit. there's no way I'm saying that joke. So I, I, I think a couple more weeks and then I'm going to get to a point where it's really too many pieces to try to put it together to be able to say it or too many things I have to take out to be able to say it. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I think. All right. So you heard that here first, ladies and gentlemen. We only have a few more weeks left of the joke vault. Are we going to replace it with something else? We should. Are you going to come up with new material? I think you should. Based on the response we've been getting on the ones I have, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, there, you know, th there is not a clamoring for more. Well, but these jokes are like 20, 30 years old. I thought maybe if you had some new material, you can you can test it out on this audience before you, you go to, I don't know, Comic Strip Live and, and test it out in front of a live audience. But But here's the thing. Looking back on these and saying them, and then if they're not funny or... Uh, inaccurate as you point out every week something in it so what it's fucking 20 or 30 years ago if i say them now and they suck that's now that's hurtful <laughs> I, I love how this started out with you correcting me every episode going oh some technical corrections from last episode you said xyz but in reality it's this now all of a sudden <laughs> i'm the asshole for pointing out that some of your jokes don't hold water no, see, I have ADD. You're now making fun of a medical condition. <laughs> well, you just made fun of my uh, facial tics, my nervous tics, my yes. my mild form of Tourette's. So I think we're yeah, even that's on that. weak sauce. Get a dick thrust, dude. Get a dick thrust. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. All right, all right. I I left it up to you to decide what we're gonna do next episode because you didn't like my idea. Well, so here's the thing: you wanted to do either Bean Boozled, fiery. Right, which is all the or super hot I came shit. up with a better idea. Yeah. Or the one chip challenge. Yes. Which I actually had you do a few years ago. Uh-huh. So what my, no, my this, idea that was, was like a decade ago, I think. Wasn't was it, it that long? It was, yeah, it was, it was probably long. at least five years ago. So I, I just think that this was like a visual thing, and I don't know how well it works on the, the podcast, right? When it when this goes to the podcast. So sure. I'd be curious on how that worked before we decided yeah so i think for next episode we'll leave it as to be decided <laughs> and with that i'm michael carter I, i'm gonna boycott this i i you you give me shit all the time for bored. answers you give me shit all the time for non-answers all right i'm david michael all right and we are ridiculously, ridiculously bored, bored. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs>